What's up everybody out there? Welcome back to another Addictive Fishing video. Today, we're gonna save you money and give you a bunch of different tips and tricks on how to get your gear unsnagged out of the river. So if you guys wanna learn more about how to use these awesome techniques to save you money and get you unsnagged, stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. So the first couple things I'm going to cover when we talk about these different techniques and these ways to get unsnagged is some of your gear setup. Sometimes that is the most important part of effectively getting your stuff up and off the bottom. In my profession as a fishing guide, the best way to save money and to have fun all day is one, to be good at getting people untangled, two, is to be getting people unsnagged, and three, is to catch some fish. And they all kind of run hand in hand. The more time you spend effectively fishing, the more fish that you're going to catch ultimately. So what I want to go through with the setup first is having one, the right line ratings when you go to the river so that you're not busting off all of your tackle every single time you get snagged. This is a steelhead rod. These, all these techniques are going to work for every single kind of fish there is in the world. This is a moving river situation, but these same techniques work in some sort of a lake or a pond or a stream or whatever it is. But this is my steelhead setup that I'm using today. So I have a, an eight to 17 pound rod. It's nine and a half feet long. I have a 40 to 50 pound braid on here with my C40 Kaimar. Uh, and on the end of this, I have a bumper line tied on with a blood knot. And this knot right here is probably the most important part of not losing all your gear. This knot is a blood knot here. There's a couple different ones, Crazy Alberto. There's a uni knot, there's a double uni knot. There's a bunch of different methods to get those two lines to join each other, but not having a strong knot here will lose you all of your gear here if you are steelhead fishing or doing something with that bumper line but that doesn't necessarily change the technique of getting the stuff out. But the key point I wanna make when I'm talking about this is this line's a 50 pound, this line's a 20 pound, this line is a 12 pound for my leader down to my jig. And the reason I say that is because you want that pyramid of line weight going down towards your presentation. And that is so that you don't lose all of the gear down to your reel every time you get snagged. So I know that if I pull hard and I get my jig stuck on something, that just that jig's gonna come off and it won't break my weights off or my bobber or my top line or all the way down to my braided line. So, so now we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty. We're gonna go through and show you guys a lot of different steps and different scenarios of when you're getting caught. We'll go here, we'll get caught on some big boulders and a nice slow run. And we'll try to show you some of the techniques that I use to get this stuff out. And then we're actually gonna go go down river, get stuck in some trees, get stuck in some big rocks, get stuck on some wood, and show you a couple more ideas of how to get this stuff off the bottom. So what I'm gonna do here, I have my depth set way too deep. I didn't put any bait or anything on there. I don't wanna waste and put any plastic in the river. And I'm gonna cast up river here, and I got my stuff set about five feet too deep, and I'm just gonna wait for it to get snagged. That's how confident I am that some of these techniques work really well to show you guys. So there it is. Oh, it's not snagged yet, of course. Isn't it funny, everybody, how we're the, when we're trying to get snagged, we can't? Comment below with what you think of that. Come on, snag up there, girl. Come on. Okay. Okay, so snag number one failed. Obviously, we're not in the most snaggy spot ever. I'm gonna go up a little bit closer to us, a little bit shallower water. So the thing I'm gonna go over first is the angle of which you try to get your stuff unsnagged. So what I have here, I'm gonna have my stuff getting snagged at, at or right across from me, straight above me here. The first thing I see a lot of people do when they snag like this, look, that's on the bottom pretty good. Oh, no, it's not. Uh -huh. Let's walk up a couple more feet. There we go, okay. So we got it pretty snagged here on the bottom. Took me a few tries to actually get snagged here. So the first mistake I see people make a lot on the river when they get snagged is they start to walk down river. And now the way I wanna visualize this is as these rocks and these boulders are sitting out in front of us, your gear is coming down and into them. And as it comes into them, it's getting lodged from the up river side of that, of that structure or of that obstruction or whatever it is that you're stuck on. A lot of people I watch turn and walk down river and try to pull against it at a low point. That actually is making you more snagged into that snag. Because as you could imagine, you got your rock, you have your gear coming down, it's stuck at this angle, you're standing down here on the bank, and as you pull, it's pulling it further and further and further underneath that structure. What I want to do immediately, when I, the first thing I think of when I get snagged on bottom is to go to the same side that it got snagged on. So if I'm down here, my drift's coming down and gets stuck under the rock, I want to get to an upriver angle of that snag and of that structure so that I can get above it and pull back against the opposite side of that structure that that thing got stuck on, whether it be your jig or, or whatever you're using. So my jig stuck at the upriver side. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my rod tip high and just like that, that pulled out really easy just by pulling straight up. 
And a lot of times that is the key. You pull straight up, it pulls that tension. Your gear will follow wherever you want it to go as it goes into a structure like that. First, I'm gonna to try to identify what it's snagged on, whether it be rock, whether it be wood, whether it be just some sort of clay structure under the bottom. Thing I will say throughout this tutorial is if you're snagged on wood, a lot of times, unless you can move it, you're not gonna get your hook out. There's not very many tricks or tips to that unless you can go out to the river and actually use a stick or something and get it off. But what I like to do first off and foremost is if I'm stuck, identify whether it's a rock bottom, whether it's clay, whether it's a tree, whether it's something worth giving that much effort to get it off and actually walking up the river. But I'm snagged at this angle, I wanna get above it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is walk straight up river. So what I've done now, I've got to an upriver angle. I'm about 45 degrees upriver from the snag. You can see by coming up, I've gotten my bobber to lift up out of the water, which is stopping that resistance back down towards that rock that I'm snagged on. So I'm gonna lift my tip high, I'm gonna lift it out towards the river, and I'm gonna give it a few yanks, not too hard, not hard enough to break your rod, but grab the butt of your rod with one hand, just like that, and you saw how easy that came out. I didn't even have to actually yank it too hard. So I'll try to get that done again. I'll try to get it snagged for you guys again, but you can see by going to that opposite angle, I couldn't get it by pulling out it across or from down river, but going up river of it, I pulled back against the angle that that thing actually went into that rock. So try to identify that when you do get snagged of which angle your stuff went into and try and go above or back the opposite direction of the way you got snagged. So the second technique, if step one didn't work, going up river and against the angle of where you were snagged, what I like to do again is try to get some sort of force pulled from the opposite side of the snag. And what I do by that, I'm gonna go up river. This is probably one of my favorite ways to get stuff out if I'm in very fast water. And it's the same sort of technique, we're gonna go above our bobber, but then we're gonna let a bow of line go below and use that actual tension from the water current and our line to pull against at a different angle and then go back to my up river technique. So I'm snagged out in front of me. I got my bobber back up above the water. I can't get that thing out. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let about 20 to 50 feet of line out. And I'm gonna try to mend that line to go to the opposite side of my bobber. So my bobber is stuck on the, on the, in the middle. My line is over here to the right. I'm gonna keep trying to mend that line over to get myself a belly to the opposite side, to the, to the river side of my snag. And then I'm gonna let that tension come tight. As soon as I feel that line catch that belly of that water, I'm gonna lift hard, pull against that line, and just like that, you saw how it popped me out. So what that technique does is it gives you that opposite drag and that opposite pull from a different direction. And that might just move your lead or whatever you have stuck on the bottom just enough in one direction that once you pull back from the side that you were pulling on originally, you'll be able to yank that thing free and either move the rock or move the structure that it's actually stuck on. So I'll try that one more time for you guys. Give you a little bit better example. So there we are, stuck on the bottom. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wade back out here, or even if you're in the boat and you can't get it, I'm gonna let as much line go to the other side, to the middle side of the current from that snag, pulling straight at a different angle. Basically, I've already tried my upriver technique, obviously. I walked up, I pulled against it at the upriver angle, trying to pull it out, it didn't work. Now I'm gonna let my belly go down below. I'm gonna close my bail, let that line catch that tension, and then lift hard. And you're holding against that tension of the current in your line to pull that out. So it's still stuck there. I'm gonna do it one more time. And just like that, she pops out. You saw that, and then I went right back to my upriver presentation. I yanked against it and it popped that thing out. So I dislodged it with that downriver pressure, and then I was able to pull it out from that upriver angle, all from the same spot. That way I wasn't walking up and down the bank trying to get this unsnagged. So first two tips, start upriver of the snag, try to pull it out from the angle it came in, and then try that downriver belly, yank against it to try to dislodge that lure. Now we're going towards this, the arch nemesis of fishermen, and that is the trees. And we're gonna talk about squirrel fishing here. And what I mean by that is getting stuck above you in those branches and all over, whether you're casting at the bank or casting from the bank. I'm gonna show you the few of the techniques and the few different ways that I like to get my stuff out of trees in particular. So we have the perfect situation here where we have a lot of overhanging branches and a lot of times the hard part of it because you have your hat on because, you're, uh, because you have your sunglasses and because you're staring at the river you're not looking above you at the obstructions and my hat's blocking off all these trees so a lot of times an angler will go and he'll cast up too high and get himself stuck in the branches up above him. Well look at that I already got one. That's how good these techniques work is it just yanks the branch off by itself. 
So what I'm gonna do here, and you guys are gonna laugh because I'm gonna purposely get stuck in this tree ab above me, but I'm gonna show you the techniques and show you how less is more when you do get stuck up in those branches like this. So I'm gonna take a step down. I'm gonna aim for that one branch right there. It looks like a, like a nice one. Oh, I except I got the ones behind me instead. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna go right up and into that stuff right there. So I'm stuck in the branch and you can see how this is a pretty easy one. This is, this is gonna start out basic. I'm gonna try this a few times for you guys. But you see how I actually have just the end of that branch. A lot of anglers would get to here and it's wrapped, it has one full wrap on it and they would try to yank. But what's gonna happen is if I yank too hard against that, my gear, everything's gonna go like a pendulum and it's gonna fly straight up into the branch above it. So here is the key and really where I stress less is more. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna reel my bobber all the way up right to the end of that limb. And then I'm gonna start to pull slightly. You see how I'm doing just those little movements. I'm not pulling too heavily. I can tell that even if I do get wrapped right around the end of that, I'm gonna be able to get my bobber back at this point. I'm just, my weights are touching. I'm gonna to give it a couple jiggles and just like that, with its own weight, it actually fell off that limb. And so you can see by not yanking right away, by letting it get hung up there, letting it all fall down naturally, and it doesn't tie any knots, it doesn't wrap your gear up at all, and it allows you to just slowly reel and slowly pull off using those small little jerks to get it to fall off of that limb like that. So let's try it again. Let's try to get it stuck worse this time. So I'm gonna go right up. Bam, that looks like more like a typical stuck. So I got my stuff tangled, it's wrapping up. I'm gonna slowly, once again, I'm just very, very slowly pulling against that. And this one is actually quite a mess. But you see, basically it almost turns into a puzzle, you guys. I'm gonna start taking very small movements, very small precaution to not get that wrapped any worse than it is. like so now I got my bobber coming back at me the next technique now that I know it's wrapped I can see is to identify the kind of branch that I'm stuck on is it is the tree alive is it dead what can I do here to try to actually just break the obstruction that I'm that I'm hung up on you can see there's broken stuff these are Christmas trees all over here but I'm going to identify how this stick does not want to bend in towards me and because of that it'd be a good way to break that thing I have my 20 pound test wrapped around it now so what I'm gonna do is when I go to actually try to break this, I'm actually gonna pull down and towards the water so that I don't get a laser of lead and, and hooks right back into my face. So I can tell it's stuck there. I'm gonna swing kind of like a pendulum and I'm gonna try to break that limb itself. And as each time it swings back and forth towards me, I'm being able to pull it against that other tree limb right there. And using that momentum, I'm hoping that this thing will eventually just break. So we got some pretty strong line on there. Oh! Now I got it double wrapped. This is a nightmare. <laughs> so now that I've got that thing completely wrapped around there, I want to try to salvage what I have and what I can. So what I'm going to do to do that, I'm not going to try to put my rod down and pull against it like so. And this actually still might break the branch, but what I don't want to do is yank so hard on my rod that I'm going to break it. So I can tell right now the amount of force I'm having to put on this thing. My line might be able to break that, that stick, but I don't think I'm going to be able to pull that limb off of there with my rod without hurting it in some form. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let as much line out as I can to where I can just reach up and grab the line. I'm going to put my rod then in a safe place right here behind me. Nice and out of the way. And the thing about this braided line, or really any line, as you start to pull on it, it becomes even tighter, the diameter shrinks, and it becomes like a cutting surface. Basically, I can slice all my, I've sliced myself all the way to the bone with this braided line before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna either use a rag or a glove or some sort of sleeve, and I'm gonna take and make just a couple of wraps with this around my arm. Two normally does the trick. So now that I have those two wraps around my arm, I'm gonna start to give that thing a real pull. And I think with just enough force, Keep wrapping it to where it's tight enough. I might be able to get that thing to pop off of there. Now this way, you guys, you're not gonna be losing all your line. You're not gonna be cutting that line at the tip of your rod tip. And once again, you're not gonna be breaking your fishing rod while you're doing this, which is very crucial. Okay, I'm just gonna keep backing up. I'm gonna keep pulling that limb to the opposite direction that it comes from. Hopefully it'll break that stick. Make sure to keep either glasses on you guys or your head turned away at this point because you never know how fast this stuff's gonna come running back at us. So, right there. Got my bobber back. Didn't break my line any further up my line than right here at my uni knot. 
and there we go. We salvage one piece of our material. And again, by working that line ratio down, starting with the 50, going to the 20, all the way down to the 12, you saw how hard that thing was to break when I got to that 20, and I still got my bobber back. So that was a good salvage. I got my bobber back, I got it out of the tree. I'll show you again a couple more techniques to try to get this stuff out. Okay, so here I've done it again. This one wasn't so bad. The thing about it is you can see all the line is kind of laid out on that tree limb. Again, less is more. I knew it was going into the tree. I wasn't gonna try to stop it, and make that thing whip around fast and tangle up on those tree limbs. I let it hit, I let it fall flat, nice and easily. Now the key is here, you guys, again, less is more. I'm gonna be very, very gentle with this. I wanna try to get this one piece at a time. So I got my bobber over that limb now. Basically, no matter what, I think I'm gonna get my bobber back because I have my line tapered. Now I have that worm stuck on that last little limb there. I'm just gonna pull it ever so slightly, giving it those small jiggles to try to get that thing unwrapped. That worm wrapped around once or twice. And just like that, it's coming undone. Oh, just like that, okay, cleared that branch. It wrapped once more though, but I definitely got most of my business end back. If I just lose my jig now, everything's gonna be okay. So I got that off, there we go. We're out of the last limb. And you see each time is wrapping a little bit on each limb. And the key is, is once it does spin off of one, to let it relax and come unhooked from the other one. You don't want to have that thing going too hard the whole time. So you saw those small whips and those little jerks getting that thing to swing back and forth and really trying to focus on what you're actually snagged on. I saw each time that came unhooked from each branch, it wrapped around the next one. So doing just enough of that wiggle movement with your rod tip, getting that thing to swing around and unwrap from each branch is what saved that thing for me this time. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so I think the funnest part of this tutorial for you guys has got to be me going around the river trying to get snagged all day and having a hard time doing it. I don't know if I'm just in the, in the zone today, but we're trying to show you guys the old getting it snagged, the old, again, the arch nemesis of a fisherman, and it's the tree on the other side of the river. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get snagged over there. That way I can show you some of my tricks I like to use for pulling it out of those snags that are far away from you. Ah, just short. The goal is here to not get it snagged so bad that I can't get it out for you guys. So I finally done it. The biggest problem any fisherman has out there is the tree on the other side of the river. It took me about four or five casts to get stuck in it, which is kind of funny. I'm sure that's a funny part of today. You guys watching this video is me trying so hard to get snagged and this time it finally worked. So what I've done, I landed it in the tree. I knew it was gonna get stuck in the tree. It hit and I just left it. Once again, just like I said a second ago with these trees on our side of the river, you don't wanna do as much when it hits the tree. Less is more, once again. So I know I'm stuck just, looks like I have my weight and my, my jig. So identify what you're stuck on, slow pull against it, see how bad it is wrapped. Oh, I can see my worm now, it's stuck wrapped around one limb and I'm gonna use that same exact tip jiggle that I was doing before. I'm moving it back and forth using the flex of that rod. And if that doesn't come off with that, I'm gonna slowly get a little bit heavier a little bit heavier, a little bit harder, and just like that, by getting that motion going about th a foot more in each direction, I'm throwing that stuff around in a circle again. So if it is wrapped, it's gonna finally eventually get that pressure and it's gonna have that momentum going the right direction and it's gonna unravel and come back out. So when you're stuck on a tree on the other side of the river, using that wiggle technique, using pressure, applying pressure, but doing those slow to fast movements, again, start small, start with those small little wiggles, less is more, then get more aggressive, then get more aggressive, and then go to that snapback or that bow and arrow type of technique to try to get yourself that opposite force and let that hook come out of that wood. So last but not least, we're gonna talk about how to get spinners and hardware and jigs out of a tree up above us or on the other side of the river. This is gonna, again, coincide with a lot of what we've already covered today, but it's nice to see and see an example of actually how to do this, because it's very, very delicate and it's a very easy process, and I wanna show you how to do it just right here. So to get the hardware and the jigs unstuck, we're gonna use a lot of the same techniques we've already showed you, but I wanna show you guys that hands-on so you can see how slow and how delicate I wanna do this as I'm pulling it out. So I'll try one more time. Can't believe I'm doing this with my old faithful blue spinner. There it is, it's stuck right around the tree there. If I can't just get that thing to fall straight out of there, which I can't, it's obviously snagged. I got it, and this would be the same example as if I had this stuck on the opposite side of the river. I could see it hang. I didn't pull too hard against it to get it to whip and wrap around. I can tell I don't have a lot of really tight wraps around that limb because I'm able to give and 
give and take line like you see here. But I know that my hook will stick into that wood as soon as it gets to it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull all the way up to where it's about five to six inches. I'm gonna get that thing to touch and then I'm just gonna try to let it roll right over. Just like that. You saw how that very delicate and that very easy pull, but again, less is more. It's very important with that spinner because that hook is fixed to that certain presentation. It's just lying and then your hook. So once you get that thing to your hook, you wanna slowly roll it over. And that's why, again, I like the side wash hook on my stuff. It's a lot easier to get unstagged. So let's try one more time here. Just like that, got that thing all wrapped up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reel that thing all the way up and then you can see it's stuck on about three or four different points here. I'm gonna try to get that pendulum effect to stop. I want my line to stop, sw I'll stop swinging back and forth like that. I'm gonna bring my spinner all the way up, again, about six inches from the log, and I'm not gonna pull hard, you guys. I'm just gonna slightly pull against it, drop again. See, just like that, I'm like just finessing it. I'm taking, I'm only pulling three to four inches of line at a time. Now I got my hook stuck. That's bad, we're in the danger zone. There we go. And see, same, same with those little, those little tip wiggles. I'm just giving it a little bit of line. I'm helping that line roll over without putting too much pressure on it to where it digs into the wood. And just like that, I got one more wrap to go. And just like so, I got it to roll over and fall off of that limb without hooking that hook into it. So using those small movements and those soft tugs on that line to where that thing doesn't spin too hard and stick that hook into the wood is crucial when trying to get unstuck out of the trees. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning into this video today. I hope these techniques help you get more stuff off the bottom of the river and help you have a little more fun out there while you're trying to catch fish. A lot of them can be used together. Again, you wanna start with that upriver or that opposite direction of where you snagged. Watch this video a couple more times over and over. Watch the different techniques that we've shown you and use each of them all together to try to get yourself unsnagged every time that you get stuck on the bottom. If you guys wanna see more awesome content just like this one and these awesome how-tos, go up here and click this link to this next video. If you haven't already done so, go down, subscribe, turn your bell on, give this video a thumbs up and comment below with what you thought of today's video. You could be the comment of the day just like this guy right here. You guys stay fishy and we'll see you out there.